So I've been working as a professional in the 3D printing industry for many years now. And one of the things I used to absolutely love to do is 3D printing educational workshops. I've done at schools, libraries, academic institutions in multiple states. And it used to feel really good to give back and to inspire the next round of 3D printing tech enthusiasts. And now while the world is upside down and on pause, I didn't want to deprive everyone who wants to learn about all the fascinating applications of 3D printing in the real world. And so I'm putting out my entire presentation, my entire workshop for free. So if you enjoy it, please share it around and get ready to add a new dimension to your tech knowledge and let's have some fun while we're at it. So without further ado, 3D printing applications in the real world. All right, strap yourselves in folks because we're gonna cover a lot today. And before we get to all the amazing ways that 3D printing is revolutionizing the world from impressive cars to homes to organs and prosthetics, we have to make sure that we're all on the same page. So what exactly is 3D printing? It sounds technologically intimidating, but the concept is actually quite simple. Simply put, 3D printing is the action or process of making a physical object from a 3D designed item on a computer program. So the easiest way to understand it is to first look at an example of 2D printing. If you've ever written on a Microsoft Word application and then printed it out, that's essentially 2D printing. You're taking a two-dimensional file and you are printing it out. 3D printing works in a similar fashion. You create something in a software program that allows for three-dimensional design, and then you print it out, and they have that third dimension to it, which is depth. So let's take a look at an actual example. So I had a pediatric doctor who was a client who wanted me to 3D print a muscular motivational squirrel for his patients to be entertained by. So I went to Fusion 360, which is a CAD program where you can design in three dimensions. And I went and created this squirrel in three dimensions. And then when I was done and I converted the file, I went and I printed it out using a 3D printer. And we'll cover all the different types of 3D printers in a second, but just to show you the end result, when I printed it out, it looked like that. It was a physical object with three dimensions. And here's me rotating it, so you can see it in different material. This happens to be resin, and this was blue plastic. So I just showed you guys the way I designed something, and then I showed you the final object. However, I want to make sure that you understand the typical 3D printing workflow. How everything begins from idea to final clean print. So essentially, you choose a CAD program, and CAD just stands for Computer Aided Design. It's any program that you can design in three dimensions. Once you choose a CAD program to design on and create the design, you're ready for the file transfer process. This is where you save your design and then send the design to a specific type of chosen 3D printer in your possession. Once you print the file on your chosen 3D printer using the chosen material, and there's a lot of material to choose from and we'll cover that shortly, then you're ready to remove the print, clean the print, remove the supports, and sand and cure if necessary. So what exactly do I mean by supports? Here you can see this is what the object looked like and it's a 3D printed MRI toy straight off the printer. You see all these supports here and this is what it looked like with the supports taken off. So 3D printing support structures are not supposed to be part of the actual finished model. They're used to support parts of the model during the actual printing process. It creates a foundation for layers of the actual model to be built on, basically, if an object is complex, it will always have extra supports when it comes out of the printer. But then you simply snap them off, sand it down so that there's no jagged edges from the leftovers, and you're good to go. So I promise we're going to get to the really, really interesting stuff from 3D printed houses and 3D printed impressive cars and prosthetics and stuff. But before we do, we need to cover a few more somewhat mundane, boring things. So let's discuss the different types of 3D printers. There's many types of 3D printing processes that print in all sorts of materials, from glass to metal to plastic. But let's take a look at two of the most popular methods. 
So the first most popular method is material extrusion. And you could think of material extrusion as taking a toothpaste tube, squeezing it so the toothpaste comes out, and imagine the toothpaste hardening as it comes out of the tube. This way you could layer things from bottom to top and create an actual object 3D printed. And here you see a time lapse of it. This probably took about four to five hours, but they're just showing you a fast version of it so that you can see the final project. And as you see here, it also has supports, which we just covered what they are. Now the pros to material extrusion is it's relatively cheap. You can use ABS or PLA plastic. It's easily attainable materials. They come in various colors and it's sturdy. The cons is that it's not extremely precise, it's timely to print, and there's potential toxins involved, which we'll talk about in part two of the presentation. Now the second method I want you to be familiar with is called stereolithography. It's basically light causing material to harden from a pool of liquid. So the way it works, and this is reverse footage, they're going to show you the time lapse version right now. As you see, it's basically pulling the object out of the pool of liquid. That's what it looks like. However, what it's really doing is there's light in the pool of liquid that's causing this Eiffel Tower structure to harden. The pros is that it's relatively quick, it's precise and in fine detail. If you wanted to, you can literally write your full name on here, really tiny letters, and it will come out pristine. You'll be able to read it. The other material extrusion process, it's not as precise. Also, there's smooth finish on these, and it's excellent for prototyping complex things. The cons is that it's more expensive. This usually involves resin or special material that's a lot more expensive than PLA and ABS plastic. And the objects can be directly affected by sunlight, since light was one of the things that was causing the object to form. Direct sunlight from a prolonged period of time can affect the object. And also, there's potential toxins involved here as well, and also we'll discuss that in part two of the presentation. Congratulations guys, you made it to the fun stuff. Now we're gonna jump into all the various ways that 3D printing is enhancing not only people's lives but animals' lives and helping sustain the environment. And we're also just gonna learn about how it's bettering the world. So I wanna start with 3D printed casts and orthosis. 3D printed casts are an excellent example of how innovative 3D printing technology can really improve our lives. Anyone that's broken something knows how annoying a cast can get. You get skin irritation, infuriating itching, smelly cast during the summer. It's terrible. But this 3D printing technology it was able to solve that by creating breathable, fashionable, hygienic, and very practical casts. No more skin irritation, and best of all, it's waterproof, so you can take showers with these. Also, there's access to the limb for treatment with different modalities like ultrasound, acupuncture, light massage. This helps in the healing process, and previously you couldn't do it because you had that hard, bulky cast. This little fella here is Sprocket. He got mauled by a dog and with the help of this orthosis, he'll likely be able to heal and use his limb again. Unlike a prosthetic limb, an orthosis is a temporary support brace used to help heal or correct an injury. And once again, this is an example of supports that were broken off, cleaned, and then adjusted and colored so that Sprocket can use it as an orthosis. Human prosthetics. For those that don't know, prosthetics are artificial devices that replace missing body parts, which may have been lost due to trauma, disease, or a condition present at birth. Prostheses are intended to restore the normal functions of the missing body part. Here you see Dontavius Morris, who was an 8th grader at the time of this photo, at Memphis School of Excellence. He was born without a right arm, but now has a 3D printed prosthetic in his favorite color and design. He can close his hands with this prosthetic, making it possible to grip and hold objects. Dontavius wants to inspire disabled children by being the first player in the NBA with a prosthetic. Go Dontavius! The custom design capabilities are endless with 3D printing. This goes a long way to helping those with prosthetics regain their confidence and unique identity. On the right, you see a design made with the help of Japanese video game developer Konami, who recently teamed up with a prosthetic limb designer Open Bionic to launch a 3D printed bionic arm inspired by 
by the Metal Gear Solid video game character, Venom Snake. Very cool. What's really heartwarming is that these innovations are not just used to enhance the lives of humans. It's beautiful that many nonprofits exist today that help injured animals live their lives in relative normalcy. Animal prosthetics have been 3D printed all over the world and across a wide variety of species to address birth defects, man-made trauma, accidents, and battles in the wild. Here, you see a goose that has a 3D printed beak. You see a dog that has a prosthetic for a limb. You see a wheelchair created for a little puppy. You see Foghorn the rooster here with brand new 3D printed feet. So if you think prosthetics are cool, get this, we're actually 3D printing body parts. This is a really inspirational story. So this patient here suffered a devastating injury to his frontal lobe and experienced tons of brain swelling. It was considered life-threatening. He went into a coma for two months. An infection developed in the skull bone and Dr. Gupta of Robert Wood Johnson had to be really resourceful and decided 3D printing new skull parts was the best way to fill in the missing skull bone and the result was great. And so this is a really, really interesting trend where 3D printing is being used in operating rooms. Here's an example of 3D printing helping to rebuild spinal vertebra. Here is a 3D printing technology for knee replacement purposes. And the custom aspect of 3D printing is really important to mention because before, everyone used to get basically the same knee replacement. Now, a healthy knee in a patient can be scanned and then mirror image of it generated via 3D printing. And so the knee replacement will be a better custom made fit for the patient rather than just getting the cookie cutter treatment approach. And this is an example of a 3D printed prosthetic eye for cosmetic purposes which means that the eye does not function as a regular eye. It just blends in and looks like the individual has a natural eye. However, we will discuss later on about actual organs being printed that function the way they should. You hungry? How about some 3D printed food? What? We mentioned that different types of material can be used in 3D printing. Well, edible food and dessert filament is included on that list. You can literally have the material be delicious. This is a pancake bot that prints breakfast. This is Cakewalk 3D. It's a food extruder for 3D printing cake designs. And this is really cool because you can get really intricate with your designs. And it's something that you may not be able to do by hand. As you can see, you can also replicate it so you can save time if they're creating a lot of cakes in bulk. It saves time and it can be very, very precise without messing up and that's difficult to do by hand. And food is not the only place where 3D printing design capabilities are being utilized. We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Vitamins and medicine can be 3D printed nowadays as well. This is a company called Get Nourished and they allow you to personalize your vitamins and then have them 3D printed and delivered directly to your house. This is really cool for nutritionalists and people really into health because they can custom create and custom tailor their vitamins and supplements to their own unique needs. And this right here is a really popular prescription medication for epilepsy, and it's also 3D printed. The 3D printing process allows for this medicine to dissolve quickly and be swallowed easier. Medications that are 3D printed layer by layer can allow for controlled material bonds at the microscopic level because of 3D printing surgical precision capabilities. Furthermore, scientists are working on 3D printing medications that will have unique delayed release responses, and even personalized mechanisms to introduce medication into the body. Designers all over the world are adding a new dimension to their creativity, which is allowing them to 3D print in cutting edge design that was simply not possible before. This is a scarf that was actually 3D printed by a student in a laboratory that I used to be affiliated with. Here, you can see the intricate design capabilities for jewelry. Look at this gold piece right here. This would be so difficult to handcraft or to mold without the beautiful powers of 3D printed design and the capabilities of the 3D printers themselves. And this one right here is worth talking about. This is the spider dress 
built by fashion tech designer Anouk Wiprecht, which uses an Intel Edison chip and proximity sensors so that the dress can react based on how close you're standing and how quickly you approach the individual. It's really interesting that they're combining AI with 3D printing and with personality science. What? 3D printed homes? And they're sustainable for the environment? You're talking about real life-size homes? Some of them are 3D printed in less than 24 hours? No way. How's that even possible? How are they using giant 3D printers to do this? You're going to find out this and much more in part two of the presentation.